Instagram extravaganza. This is my news desk. This is my Paul Ware painting. Hi, Paul Ware. I'm waving at you. Hi, Liz. I'm waving at you. Jamie, thanks for being here. Very excited. Okay. So today, as many of you know, we are talking to Matt Rappaport. He is going to join us to talk about the third annual side lot experimental film showcase that takes place in June alongside Evanston May. He has requested to join the conversation. We are just going to let him join the conversation right about now. Um, and if it times out today on the show, mainly, we're going to talk about so big. Ah. Hey, how are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks for joining me. I know you're busy getting your hair cut. <laughs> Did you get one? I cut, I cut Did your myself. internet go out? Hi, Denise. Hi, Sonia. All right, Matt, how's the connection in your world? I think it's good. How about for you? I think it's good. Cool. Uh, how's the haircut? Good. All right, I did it myself. Liz Want us to be louder? You did do it yourself, I can tell. Um, Jacqueline is logged on. Hi, Jacqueline. Fun. Okay. So we've had a lot of people outside of the Evanston market request to join in the fun. Ooh, bummer. They can't, right? You mean the fun in terms of the video film festival, video festival? Correct. Yeah, I mean, the way it's set up right now is it really is, it's an Evanston focus, so the, the boundaries are pretty loose. So it's people who live or work in Evanston. Okay, right. Yeah. I made that rule, so I'm just gonna have to live with it. Hi. Yeah, I mean, moving forward, we might, we might shift stuff a bit, but you know, this year we're still sticking with that rule. And for this video, experimental video showcase, you work with several co-curators. That's right. I uh, work with Ann Stevens, um, who also is a co-curator of Side Lot, which is the side wall at the Evanston Art Center. And then we brought on Joy Norris, who is a local filmmaker. Yeah, rock star. Rock star. Cool. Yeah. And as curators, you give thumbs up or thumbs down to people, or do you let everybody put in a film? Uh, generally speaking, we try and be as inclusive as possible. So the idea is that it's a showcase. We want to see what people are making that uh, is, is within the realm of experimental work. So that's really our guiding uh, principle. Is it experimental? And can we bend the definition of experimental to include the work? And I should say that we, we, we share work or we have work from everything from like grade school students doing experimental work to very well-known international video artists. So it's, uh, it runs the gamut. And it's all ages and- All ages. Okay, yep. what makes it experimental? What, what makes things experimental or what makes it experimental? No, what makes it, no, that's too broad of a question, Matt. What right. makes these films experimental? They are experimental. I, th I think I only heard half of what you said though. So I'm gonna um, nod and smile. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, but tonight you're having an info session, which That's is right. to review all the reasons of a film short is experimental and how it's not experimental. Cause I know in the past you've had like really straight narratives that have made super logical sense and that that's not experimental. Correct, correct. So that's typically what's happened is the work that doesn't get accepted is typically not accepted because it's straight up narrative and that there isn't an experimental bend to it. So tonight we'll be meeting via Zoom starting at seven o'clock central time. Um, the information is both on the Evanston Made website 
also on social media, also on the Evanston Arts Center website. So you can just join that Zoom call, but we're basically answering any and all questions from, is my video experimental? Um, to how do I post the video? We know that a lot of young people in particular are making videos all the time, often on, on platforms like TikTok or Instagram um, or Musical.ly, which is now TikTok. And, you know, so we're here to also help people figure out like, well, how do I get this video off of my cell phone and onto Vimeo so that it can be uh, submitted for the, for the showcase? Yeah. And then the showcase, how do people see it? Once all these are in, where do you view them? Great question. So typically, the way, so we're, we're living in, in strange times, um, mm -hmm. all of us collectively. And typically what we've done is during the opening weekend of Evanston Made, we will have a outdoor uh, video screening. So I have access to a very large projector and I drive up uh, with the Range Mobile Lab, which is one of my projects. And we, we project the video work on the wall across from the Evanston Arts Center. And so it's, it's very community-based. It's, it's a little bit of a party atmosphere. A lot of the artists come in, filmmakers come, uh, as well as families and family and friends. Um, it happens after the big opening at the Evanston Arts Center for Evanston Made, or at least it has in the past. So there's a huge crowd. This year, it's going to be a little bit different because a lot of stuff, we just don't know what's happening. Um, so I think what we'll likely see, and I'm, I'm not making any... I'm going to make a prediction and not a promise, but I predict that we'll probably extend deadlines for both submissions as well as when we're going to actually showcase the work until we have a better sense of when it's safe for people to congregate. And is there a plan B? I know that everybody is asking this question right now. Mm -hmm. um, is there a plan B where all of the shorts go onto a channel and they're all online or is there, there there's, there's a plan B and a plan C. So um, plan B is, um, yes, an online playlist. Everything gets submitted through Vimeo. So it's very, very easy to do that kind of thing. Um, plan C uh, is not a real plan yet, but we have had talks about pop-up drive-in theaters. Oh, Things cool. like that. Um, again, nothing official to announce, but I think it's an interesting myself and enjoy we all think this is a really interesting model but we need to make sure that again it's happening when people feel comfortable even getting their cars near each other <laughs> never right. their bodies so or yeah like if it was like a drive-in movie theater environment and or an empty storefront with seats mm -hmm. absolutely other right there's probably yeah, a lot yeah the, you know the thing i've been thinking about because i'm also i've got a personal project that um, could utilize the, the storefront model is that right now I can't imagine a lot of people wanting to support a storefront model, which would encourage people to congregate. Right. So, so we're being like really mindful about, about that right now. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I appreciate so much that you're being um, innovative and creative about how it is you're going to make these changes that we're all eventually going to have to make. But is there anything in, in this being your third year, regardless sure. of the strange times, is there any changes that you're making to the festival that is, or the submissions that are going to be different this year? Um, so I don't think that there are any real differences, but we've been working on every year we try and figure out who have we not talk to who's not aware that this is an opportunity um, because really what we want to be able to do is consolidate and represent all of the really interesting work that's going on in the area because we know that we have tons of artists who live and work in Evanston and so the question's always like okay are, do people know about it and do they feel welcome to submit their work so I guess that's one of the beauties of doing this kind of, of presentation is I see like there are lots of people out there um, who are commenting and, and showing some love. And if you are not familiar with this program, I would just encourage you to reach out to us and check out the Evanston Made website and the submission process. And then let us know if you have any questions because we, we want work. We want to see really cool stuff. We want to see weird work. We want to see, you know, thought provoking work. We want to see playful work. You know, mm -hmm. we just, just want to see a lot of work. And I appreciate that you guys are, yeah, willing
willing and willing to put only problem with this uh, live stream is really it's global. I mean, I know that people um, all the way in El Paso, Texas are watching. Woohoo! Shout right. out to all that. Just jumped in. But, you know, the, the hard part is how do you get people right now? Now aware of all the things that, you know, we need a short video promo that you sure. guys create that shares it with the world. Such a great idea. No, there isn't yet. I mean, we do have representation on the website for Evanston Made and also the website for the um, for the Evanston Art Center, who've been amazing partners. So their their images and, um, you know, lists of who the past participants are and that sort of thing. Um, so you can get a sense of, of, of what the event looks like. For our global audience, I would just mm -hmm. say, you know, if, if you're interested in this sort of stuff or you're interested in experimental work or would be interested in partnering on other sorts of events, I would still reach out to us because, you know, as a as a group of artists interested in experimental media, um, we can always do other stuff and we can always do other stuff together. Right. What? And let's talk about other stuff right now. So you just recently <laughs> shared with me the boundary issues wow for a second i almost forgot the name of the show i know i had to look it up too it had been That's you know weird. since last summer right this beautiful 360 tour video that obviously this is the first time matt that you've had a minute to breathe in quite a while and i'm so grateful that that is done but um and and i will share all of that with people watching today but is there projects right now? Are there projects right now that you are finally getting to? That yeah, I mean, sort of. So like within my own practice, there's been a, a shift, right? So before the COVID thing hit, I've been working on the Range Mobile Lab, which is a, it's kind of a research live video performance platform built into a 1995 step van. It kind of looks like an ice cream truck for people who haven't seen it, where the windows are video projections and I drive neighborhoods uh on on predetermined loops looking for places where people congregate or bridging two different neighborhoods and live capturing video remixing it and projecting it and then turning that video stuff which also gets thrown up live onto onto youtube turning that into murals and other kind of artist ephemera all that stuff was what i was working on uh prior to covid and right now like that's kind of dead in the water which is okay i mean that, that's life um, so I've turned my attention back to uh, looking at some photographic work I've been doing, building up new skills. So I teach immersive video at Columbia College in Chicago and had been wanting to play with this new camera and some new stuff. So I had taken the opportunity to pull together the video from last summer and I finally had time to edit it. Um, I'm looking at ways to make that work interactive. So through game engines. So nice. look, you know, in the next couple of weeks, I would say I'm hoping, fingers crossed, to be able to release that same video content, but interactive. So you can move through the different rooms instead of just have it be a linear experience. Oh, uh, that would be cool. Yeah, and, and I think you may know this, but like for the last eight, nine years, I've been working on a feature documentary film. So we are near picture lock on that. And so it's really exciting. I, I'm, I'm imagining, well, it was supposed to get released this summer, but again, COVID slowed stuff down. But mm -hmm. we are like right at picture lock moment and it's, it's really exciting. Excellent. And are you feeling any less enthusiastic about your projects or are you feeling more enthusiastic about your projects? Like where are you at in terms of, oh my gosh, this is why am I doing any of this? Or is it just plowing through? It's, it's day by day. I mean, honestly, like I, I feel like as much as I'm, trying to learn new things. I mean, part of my, my frenetic, like, oh, I'm gonna learn new game engine, or I'm gonna like figure out how to do X, Y, and Z. You know, a lot of that is just a response to feeling a little cooped up, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I'm baking a lot. I'm victory gardening. I guess that's a thing now. I, I, I bought all these like trays and I've been doing seedlings and microgreens in my basement, like a prepper mm -hmm. and uh, you know, all of a sudden on the media, I'm, I'm reading like, oh, this is a thing and stuff's all sold out. And I was like, wow, I guess I got in about two weeks before everything got sold out. Lucky me. So, so I, I think, 
you know, it goes up and down. Like there are days when I'm feeling good about it. And then there are other days when I'm like, you know, it's, it's hard to be motivated. I also yes. have two kids, you know, and a partner. And so we're doing the homeschooling thing. I work at Columbia, you know, so I teach full time and all of our stuff moved online recently. So that's a big change and trying to figure out how best to keep in touch with my students and keep them on track and check in and make sure that they're surviving and doing okay. Cause again, we had all these students and boom, dorms closed or they moving back home to the East coast or the West coast or the South. And, you know, did you with all sorts of impediments. A tremendous, did you have to learn a lot just how to do your job in terms of online teaching? Like, was there educational support around like, hey, Matt, this is how you conduct a Zoom separate room analysis with someone. What was that support like for you? Uh, you know, the school was smart. They, 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 we were coming up to spring break, so they lengthened spring break to give faculty a chance to figure out how to move things online that, that could move online. I'm pretty lucky I teach I teach a class called online video or video for internet and mobile. Sorry. We have another class called online video. So I teach video for internet and mobile. So I'm already working with students who are building content for various platforms. So I've got some students who are TikToking, others who are on Instagram live, others who are on YouTube, kids who are Twitch streaming. And we're looking at, you know, how people share and why people share and how do you build a practice in, in these platforms. So in that, that, cl that class was pretty easy to move online, but I have another class that I team teach with um, the amazing Justin Sinkovich. And we were working with a large client and the kids were supposed to go out and do like a, you know, big film shoots and stuff. And so we've had to completely rework what the expectations are mm -hmm. um, and work more with archival footage and some, you know, pre pre-rolled materials. Um, and it's going to be fine, but it's, it's a, these are, these are sizable adjustments to what we do. Yeah. yeah and it sounds right. Just to dovetail on that and to answer uh, Jack DePrimo's question. Thank you, Jack, for submitting this. We are, you know, in this live stream, we're talking to creatives who are having to pivot not only to stay relevant, but to stay busy. Um, and a lot of people are telling us a lot of artists are yeah, and stay sane, that they're going back to the archives. They're going back through old work and touching on things again. Is there a project that had been a little bit flatlined, dead in the water, that is coming back to life that you're saying, oh my gosh, I'm so happy. This was a project that was a favorite of mine right. and I'm psyched to get it back on its hands. Yeah, it's, funny. it's actually funny you asked that question. So yesterday, you know, in a moment of feeling like, oh, what am I doing and, 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 and just, feeling like I needed to get my hands around something that, that was tangible because so much of my work feels like I'm a producer a lot of the time, like writing letters to people and writing proposals. Um, I went back into my photo archive, most of which is on my phone. I've been doing a re-photography project, um, which has only been in the capture stage, but I, I got all that stuff off of my phone and back into an environment where I could start editing and printing and, and playing with that material. And then I, <laughs> that also allowed me to rediscover and reacquaint myself with some imagery. I'd been also cell phone photography. I'd been doing using um, a uh, binoculars with my cell phone, which requires a certain amount of performance because you're trying to line up that binocular with your cell phone. And mm -hmm. so I do these like speculative narrative triptychs. Um, yes. and, I, and I haven't messed around with them for a while, but I was like, oh yeah, I, I had done a, a project or done a bunch of shooting in Miami about a year and a half ago and hadn't touched any of that. So I started pulling all that material back out again. So I'll be working on that in the coming weeks for sure. Very cool. Thank you, Jack, for that question. How do you <laughs> photograph question. through binoculars? So, you know, your cell phone has, has a camera. And what, yeah. what I do is I try and line up <laughs> the, a, a, a monocular from the binocular with that lens and you get this like really beautiful area of focus but then other areas of of defocus and color aberrations and this interesting circular form so i've been doing that for about four or five years so every cell phone it, it's a little bit different because as the cameras get better um mm -hmm. you end up with more resolution but it's actually harder to control that relationship between these things that are basically a physical interface to my hands trying to find that sweet spot um, so it's, it's kind of fun. It's like, it's hard to make. 
it's a little bit of choreography, but when you get it, it's pretty sweet. Okay, so just to circle back for people who are jumping into the uh, into the conversation now, Matt and I are talking about the side lot experimental video showcase that right. is coming in June. It's three, I mean, just to be super descriptive, it is three minute experimental shorts. That three minutes or less. Yep, we've done stuff as short as 10 seconds, but it's three minutes or less. Every once in a while, if somebody puts in something slightly longer, we'll work with it um, or yeah, we'll work with it. Um, but yeah, it's experimental. It's everything from archival footage to, um, you know, experimental narrative to animation. The work really runs the gamut. Okay, good. And that's really and what we want. We're not, we, we don't have a style we're looking for. We're just looking to see what people are making in, in, a, in this community or people who are intersecting with this community in Evanston around experimental media production that can be put into a video context. Okay, and in, in addition to all ages, there's no prizes, right? There's no like best. No prizes, shit. no, no, we've talked about that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm we grateful. want to keep it non-hierarchical. It's a little bit more of a celebration. Like we all come out, there are cookies. <laughs> we watch videos on, on a giant building, mm -hmm. you know. Cookies. That's really good. Okay, yeah, and to are important. Zoom info meeting where people can go and learn and everything is on the either Evanston Made website or on Facebook or wherever. Um, yeah. Or on the Evans Art Center website under exhibitions, there's a there's a page for side lot and then the information's in there. Excellent. Okay. Yeah, good. We'll, be, we'll be jumping onto that call at seven p.m. Um, Central Time. Okay, and it's free and open. The only free caveat open. you have to live in Evanston. So for everyone, or work in Evanston, or work in Evanston, do you babysit in Evanston? Great. Oh, do you <laughs> have a job? in Evanston in the last year, great. Right, you don't add, right. You, uh, you have very loose guidelines. And can you tell me, it's, you said it's you, Anne, and Jory. Jory is new to Joy. the Cure. Yeah. Oops. Excellent. Oh, it looks like I froze. You froze oh. for a sec, yeah. I don't know if I froze. Hi friends. All right, so hi to you guys. We had a little bit of technical difficulty, even though I told my roommates to not play video games. It looks like Matt froze. Then the connection was dropped. Sorry about that. So we're going to splice some things together. Actually, Tiago is because he's totally BA. And thank you, everybody, for paying attention, for watching. Have yourself a good night. We'll be back at 6 p. Central tomorrow talking to Liz Kramer and Tiago Velo on exactly why we're doing this show in the first place. Paul Ware behind me. Woohoo!